we're, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a bill and a resolution before us today, and um, <clears throat> we're going to begin with uh, Chairman Bearden, uh, House Bill 90, I believe, and uh, we have not only House Bill 90, but we have a substitute to House Bill 90, and I think that's the one we're going to look at. And um, I, I was telling Chairman Bearden, we, uh, we have not heard this bill yet, and we already have a substitute and amendments uh, prior to the first hearing. So, Well, I thought we was good to go to about three hours ago, then some things were brought to our attention. <clears throat> and of course, on my uh, substitute, the LC number's uh, cut in half, so but should say the substitute to House Bill 90, the one we're working off of. <clears throat> I think that's LC 285471S. That could match up with the numbers I have in half. So, uh, but Mr. Chairman, I appreciate it. Where House Bill 90 first came about was our county commission in Carroll County was trying to take over, or not take over, but receive <laughs> from the Department of Natural Resources uh, We've been on uh, Mr. Chairman, um, <laughs> let's. Um, are you ready to? Are you ready to begin the? Uh, let's go. Okay. All right. I, let's, uh, let's hear House Bill 90 from Chairman Bearden. Our county was trying to receive a state park that's uh, protected by Department of Natural Resources. As you know, with the budget cuts, we were going to take control of the property. But there's a heritage preservation attachment to the property and that property cannot be deeded so working with and I got Lauren Curry up here from DNR they did a lot of work with us on making sure that House Bill 90 was good to go and that it was good with DNR what they're going to do is they're going to have a public hearing that way we got transparency on, on what's going on with the properties after the public hearing, if they decide to do the removal of the Her heritage preservation dedication, they're going to move the property over into a conservation, conservation easement. Now, this will give the property more protections under the conservation easement due to the fact that there are um, federal law and regulations that's in place for conservation easements, and there is really no uh, court precedence for the heritage trust designations. So we're getting into the transparency of the public hearing. DNR would have to uh, remove that dedication, put it under a conservation easement. It would have to be approved by the General Assembly and the State Properties Commissions before this property could be transferred over to the uh, county fee simple. And um, a couple of things to the conservation easement. This would also allow DNR to protect the other interests in the property, including any protections placed on the property as part of a funding or acquisition arrangement, whether it be uh, funding from Land and Water Conservation Fund or Endangered Species Act. So this just opens up transparency, gives it a process so that property can be deeded over to the county and also have the protections involved for to make sure for the public that property will be used for what it was in initially intended to be used for and um, good enough you got anything you'd like to say on this bill or I think that, that wraps up and certainly any questions we can help with. and there is a one amendment that we'll be looking at at the proper time on line 28 and we have to right before section 2 there be a new subsection D Y'all have that, but I don't believe you have the one word amendment we're looking at on line 28. And if you want me to go ahead and explain what that would do. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead and let us know what you're looking at doing on 28. On line 28, that line starts, and valuable consideration as determined by the State Properties Commission to a county. After the words 2A, we insert the word willing county
and then the new subsection D that would come in after subsection C would say nothing in this code section shall be construed so as to compel a county or local government to accept conveyance of a heritage preserve and no conveyance shall take place without the approval of the local governing authority. This way, uh, protection through GMA and ACCG to make sure the state does not force them to take property they don't want. So just a uh, little added protection on both sides. Everyone agrees to it. I would ask that you accept the amendments and also uh, pass the bill or give a favorable consideration to the bill. You do have questions, Representative Horn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I got one. I got actually two questions. What, what is the effect? If, what is the effect of removing the heritage preserve designation, conveying the <coughs> property to the county under a or to the local government under a conservation easement? Does this mean that they'll the county or local government will have acquired property they can't do anything with? And we'll use John Tanner State Park in my county. Right now, due to the fact there is that heritage preservation designation, it can't be deeded over. So through the process we've laid out, that designation can be removed, put on a conservation easement, and then it can be deeded over to the county. It will still give DNR oversight, but Carroll County's willing to put in a good bit of money to improve the park. They would still be able to do that, but also give some oversight by DNR to make sure the property is being used for the park and those right, but, they, but, they, but it couldn't be used. They couldn't zone it for something else. Like they couldn't Correct. develop they, it, for instance. Correct. They couldn't take the property, then turn it over to a developer and say, "Here you go, develop it the way you want to." There would still be guidelines, and that's why it's important for that. Um, I lost myself there on the uh, conservation easement, because that way that will give it the protection that the property needs. And also it will give some uh, comfort to um, the citizens throughout the state when one of these properties are about to go over to a county or a city. Okay, so in, in your case, in Carroll County's case, mm -hmm. they're going to take that property, which is a state park. Is that what I heard you That's say? That's correct. And they're going to take it, and it's going to become a conservation easement of sorts. And then what is it going to be after that? It will still be a park. They will still be able to make the improvements they need to make and put the capital into it. For so, the park. so it'll be like a county park. Under That's the correct. jurisdiction of DNR. That's whatever, correct. But the county don't want to put the money in if they don't have the ownership of the property. Like I wouldn't want to come in and make improvements to your house if I was not going to buy it. Well, you could if property. you wanted to. I know I could, but I don't want to. That, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the county don't want to do it either. So uh, that's where the protection comes in, Adam. Okay. Well, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is what, what is the incentive? I mean, I understand in this case, but, but uh, you know, if, if I'm a county and, or, or a city and there's a piece of property that the state owns that's a heritage preserve. I guess I'm trying to figure out what the incentive is. I, I understand it in your case, but is this is this pr prevalent? I mean, is there instances of this statewide where this is going to happen on a regular basis? That because there were some other instances that may come to play, so I'll let her answer that. Yes, sir. I would not say it's prevalent. This is a special case, and it's really a result of the state budget cuts that our state parks and historic sites took an FY10. It's a 46% cut to our state operating. So at that time, we were, you know, in order to keep facilities open and not close down parks or historic sites, we looked to some of our local counties, and Carroll County was frankly one of the counties that stood up and said, please don't close our park. We will put money into it. We will spend the money each year to run it. We want this to still be available to our local citizens, and we, we understand it might be, on the ch might be on the chopping block giving state budget cuts. Okay. Well, then that brings up one. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, can I, I – I, this is – Absolutely. The more I ask, the more I want to know. So, anyway, Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's a new area in my county, Chattahoochee Bend State Park. Yes, sir. And that, that's a state park. Yes, in other sir. words, the county doesn't own that property, but the county entered into a public or a partnership with the state to, to open that park and start it. Now it's in the very preliminary stages, but I guess how, how does that work? I mean, we don't, the county, the county doesn't own that property, but they're dumping a bunch of, you see what I'm saying? I mean, right. should, and we, I think should we do this, I guess, is what I'm saying? Should we? My, to do this? No, sir. I mean, my opinion would be that John Tanner is somewhat of a special case in that it's our, one of our smallest state properties. 
and it's it's certainly much smaller than than Chat Bend will be upon completion, and it somewhat stands out in terms of maybe looks a little bit more like a county park than a traditional state park. So I would say that you know the reason this has come up for John Tanner is because it is a little bit of a, a different property. Um, but the reason that DNR has worked with Representative Bearden on this language is to make sure there's a process in place that would apply to all lands that are under Heritage Preserve, and that could be other state parks, it could be wildlife management areas, it could be historic sites. So we certainly support his intent with John Tanner, but we want to make sure there's a process in place that would apply to all state Okay, I, I, you're right. You bring up a good point. I don't think Chattahoochee Bend is, is a heritage preserve. I don't think it is. No, sir, I, I don't. Think, I don't think, I don't think okay, so. So it wouldn't apply in my case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm done, but I do have one suggested amendment on top of these amendments when the, at the appropriate time. Please, sir. Okay. Representative Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just for informational purposes, can somebody tell me what is the difference between heritage preserve dedication and the perpetual conservation easement, other than the fact that one is for state and the other would be for the county? But as far as protecting the area, what is the difference in those two? I think by... Um you know, in general terms, there's there's not a lot of difference. Um, certainly, DNR's purpose in putting in asking Representative Bearden if we could then put the property in a conservation easement is to give us a way to protect the property, which is our concern. So, putting it in a conservation easement, we would write that easement in cooperation with the local government entity that's taking it on. So, certainly in this case, we would write the easement that public access would still. You know, the public would still have access, that the land would be provided for outdoor recreation, and we would write that into the easement and then put the property into our easement monitoring program. So basically DNR would, would get around to the property and, and make sure that it was still adhering to conservation easements. So I'm sure there's some technicality. There's the, the main reason for this switch is that, as Representative Bearden stated, we can't convey the property to the local entity with the Heritage Preserve on it. But by putting the conservation easement on it, it retains that protection, which is what DNR is most interested in. May I follow up? Yes. When, when I hear the word heritage preserve, I think of historical structures and historical preservation. And when I hear conservation easement, I think more of just land being, you know, preventing, you're preventing development of some type. Um, are there historic or heritage type interest in this park that will not be protected if we put it in a conservation easement rather than in being in the Heritage Preserve dedication? I think it would be uh, protected even more with this bill going through. As I said, there's a, uh, there is precedence in, in court of law and also in the federal law that will protect the conservation easement. Heritage Preserve is only on the state level. I don't think there's any court precedence whatsoever, so it will give the land more protection than what it actually has right now when they convey that property over to the to that county. Okay. My last question, if that's okay. Um, the, is this bill, in your opinion, drafted narrowly enough that it will just take care of parks that are in counties where the counties are willing to step up and and take over the park like Carroll County has done or is this setting some kind of precedent to try to move more state parks to local control or local care or local I think that this bill is certainly written with John Tanner State Park in mind however the department is very cognizant of our responsibilities and frankly we don't um, although we're very supportive of Carroll County in this situation, we don't take this very lightly, frankly. And, and there's many within the department that, you know, hate to see anything move out of, out of the department's stewardship. That being said, we think that it's the right thing for, for this situation. And that being said, we've written this bill so that that situation could not be abused and so that there was a public process involved, the Board of Natural Resources would be involved, the department would make a recommendation to the Board of Natural Resources, and the local government entity would be willing. So we do feel like it 
it's broad enough so that it could come up in another situation and we want those protections to be there so that all properties under Heritage Preserve are given due process. Thank you. Representative Chokas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, uh, I appreciate you bringing this legislation before us because um, serving on appropriations, I know how difficult it has been for the state to support uh, all the needs that are out there. And in, in, in the parks in the surrounding area that, that I live has been a, a severe challenge because they're so small. Uh, they're well attended, but the number of state employees, I think we've got one park that's just got a part-time employee. Um, with that being said, I, as I said, I think it's a great idea. I've got a couple of questions, maybe some technical questions dealing with this, and that is, would this allow county, county government, should they choose to get involved? Um, would they be able to create a foundation to raise some local money in support of the operations of the park to offer us another option? Would that be a possibility? Now I'll have to turn to Lauren when you're talking about the foundation and yeah. raising funds on that. I think um, Carroll County is a great example of a county that has really you know, stood up and said, let us help. We want to we want to make sure our park is here. And there's other examples of that. Uh -huh. Delonica Gold Museum is uh -huh. one um, that has worked very well, you know, to help us restore some hours there. So I think um, this this bill gives a vehicle to transfer transfer ownership. But certainly to the broader question, you know, DNR has seen a lot of budget cuts and we, we pride ourselves, frankly, on not having closed a park historic site or wildlife management area. That's a very strong point of pride for us. Now, like you say, we have had to downgrade our services at many facilities, um, but we welcome working with the county, and, and we're working well with counties. I mean, certainly counties and cities are hurting, too. Mm -hmm. So we certainly have many local entities that want to help us, and we're all kind of in the lifeboat together, frankly, but we welcome those conversations, and if there's anything specific, you know, we'd love to have those conversations any way that a, a county could, could try and partner with us. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm keeping y'all, but uh, with uh, the Little Grand Canyon Park, which is right next to us, uh, to my district, it's, um, it's a point of economic development. I mean, it brings tourist dollars to our area along the presidential pathways, and uh, you have my support, and I'm proud that y'all are doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, Georgia has had an outstanding network of state parks and has been able to manage those in recent years in a manner where we have additional tourists coming down and enjoying those parks. I appreciate the work that the department has done. Um, just a note, John Tanner State Park is not just for locals. My grandchildren have enjoyed that park. and. I, of course, have uh, Sloppy Floyd State Park in the district with um, Cloudland Canyon State Park just north uh, near the chairman in my district. Um, I wonder, I thought the department itself could already accept funds from foundations to the 501K, and knowing that the friends of the state parks are a group that are really working to support our state parks, I'm a little bothered. Uh, by transferring ownership of this park to a county. I'm, I'm a little bothered about what's going to happen down the road should the department continue to have financial cuts. Uh, you know, how many of these parks are we going to slough off on the locals to take care of rather than the state? That's my concern. Well, again, uh, it's going to be one of those things where the DNR is just not going force the park onto the county or city and that's why we changed the language in here to protect that the county's got to be willing and they also according to that last amendment that they got to be a willing participant and want to do it such as Carroll County because we don't want to see a state park close and with the budget cuts we've been going through over the years if there's a county that's available or has the ability to assist and keep those parks open through this uh, transfer of deed 
I think we're doing a service not just to the local area that the park's located, but for, for, for the state itself and keeping these parks open. So um, that, that's our main goal is not to let these parks get closed, but have a way if a county is, has the ability for them to assist in keeping that park open. Representative Hill. Just going okay, around the you. horn, right? We're going to go all the way around. Uh, the more we ask, the more you answer questions, and the more you talk, the more my little screen lights up. <laughs> I'll just play the fifth from here on out, then. And again, and I know this was initially written narrowly, but I'm trying to look uh, a little broader and a little further down the line. Um, and, and I have two questions, if I may. Number one, uh, starting out on, on line 32. We're talking about subject to the grant of a, a perpetual conservation easement. And then in section two under line 39, we're mentioning a conservation easement that's in the best interest of the state of Georgia, which I see a little inconsistency there. And I wonder if they should both, if, if maybe on line 39, it should also be written as a perpetual easement because one seems to give the option of whatever's in the best interest which people may or may not decide to be a perpetual easement, and the other one seems to require it as a perpetual easement. So uh, I, I guess that's my question. Is that a, am I misreading something or reading too much into it or not reading enough into it? I'm going to bring the, since when I talk too many questions, I'm going to bring the attorney up from <laughs> DNR. If you may have to walk around and come over here and join us. Okay, can you all hear me? I'm usually pretty loud. <laughs> if you can't, I'll walk around, but I think I can make this very short. Uh, the conservation easement that we would negotiate with the local would be a perpetual easement. The finding that the board has to make, I think, addresses some of the other questions that have been asked, which is that before the board would agree to a perpetual conservation easement, it must find that transferring the property to the local government is in the best interest of the state. And again, along with the public process, this was designed to, pro, to uh, preclude the possibility that willy-nilly the uh, parks might just start being handed out without anyone wanting them or if it wasn't in the best interest of the state. So the concepts, although they are uh, somewhat intertwined, are really independent concepts. Okay, so no matter what, it would be a, a perpetual conservation easement. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And my second question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Absolutely. What mechanism is in, in place or might be in place, let, let's say if a county bit off more than they could chew, for example, and they, they took over a park and then they were no longer able to maintain it, but rather than they just let it go. They closed it, shut it down, let it degrade. Is, is there anything automatically so we can, we can take it back and say this is not what we originally thought we were going to, to have? Because sometimes the county, you know, has economic problems, too. If this bill passes, gets to the floor of the House, I'll have both of them <laughs> on the floor with me to discuss this. Oh, business. by then you'll have all the answers. <laughs> um, I was actually looking at the bill again real quick to refresh my recollection as to whether or not we had included in the bill that there was going to be a reversionary interest uh, to the state. And um, I don't see it very quickly. Um, but essentially, uh, with a conservation easement, you put in the conservation easement what the terms of operating the property are. And if it says public access, and, and for example, with John Tanner, land and water conservation funds, federal dollars were used to acquire that property. It must be kept open for public recreation in perpetuity regardless of who is running it. So those kinds of issues can be put into and will have to be put into the conservation easement to make sure that the restrictions that are currently out there will be incorporated into it. I will tell you that we have explored uh, and there is a, a mechanism under the Land and Water Conservation Fund, to use that as an example, for a temporary closure if there are budget issues, but it has to be pr yeah. approved by the National Parks uh, service. National Parks? Yes. I was checking with Director Kelly to make sure I had the right government entity. But those are the kinds of issues that the conservation easement would all would have to address and both the county and the state would have to have approved it and the 
uh, board looking at it would be looking at that specific conservation easement and determining that that conservation easement was in the best interest of the state in light of all of these uncertainties that the future is going to hold. Okay, is there anywhere in, in this that, that needs to state that? I, I don't see anything. It, I, I know that's an assumption, and but I don't see anything that written here, so how does anybody know that that's the intent of this? Uh, I, I, I don't or, think or it should can, it be in here. Yeah, I don't think it can be put in there because okay. the properties may have a multitude of different kinds of funding or restrictions on them in addition to heritage preserve. This statute, this um, bill is just a design, designed to address the heritage preserve that precludes the property being transferred to the state. Again, using the land and water because it happens to apply to John Tanner, it can be transferred to the state. There's no uh, prohibition from those grant funds to preclude that, but we would use the conservation easement to incorporate in these other kinds of restrictions, and there may be others. Okay, so for future protection, uh, you don't feel that we need any wording in there that it's, the land needs to be used for its original purpose, etc. I right. just want to make sure we're guarded for future generations that know okay. nothing about the discussion we're having okay. today. Uh, uh, that's my only concern. Uh, to the extent that it does say it must be used for the same purpose as the Heritage Preserve current dedication, that is currently in there, and it also does address the conservation values. Okay, thank you, as long as you're satisfied. Thank you. Representative Kidd. Uh, I'll wait, Mr. Chairman. I came in late. I apologize. In between Mr. Bearden's answer and uh, Calvin's question, took care of mine. Thank you. Representative Bryant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question was just asked by <coughs> Representative Hill, but I don't know if I, if my question was answered completely. Uh, that is, should the county get in a situation where they cannot? Uh, maintain uh, operation of this facility does it reverts back to the state well, I understand that language could be put in into that conservation easement when they deed over the property uh, that any time that this county cannot handle it it would revert back um, I believe under subsection one the very last part says as well as any other restrictions applicable to the property that could be something they use to make sure that property comes back to the state if for some reason they cannot continue that funding source for the uh, state park. But the biggest thing in there, I believe that's why it's so important to take off that heritage preserve is that conservation easement gives so much more protections to that property that we're discussing that would go to that county than the heritage preserve could possibly give. So that's why that conservation easement is so vital to this uh, legislation and this language in the bill. Thank you. Thank you. We've circled back. Representative Horn. Congratulations, Chairman Bearden. We have finally <laughs> cleared the, the board. <laughs> unless, <coughs> unless we have a question coming right here. <laughs> All right, Representative Horn, at, earlier you said that you had an amendment that you wanted to? I, I don't know. Uh, Chairman Bearden offered up an am amendment on line 28. He said that we, we needed to insert the word willing between A and county on line 28. And I was just going to ask the attorneys if we needed to insert the same word between or local on line 29. That was it. The answer is no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I say you're talking to the right person. Representative Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm, this really makes me nervous that we are starting a precedent that we may regret. Um, I don't know what the budget's going to hold for the next 10 years, and I don't know that we want our park system dismantled piece by piece and sent to the counties where they may fall in disrepair and and not be able to be cared for any better by counties than they could by a state that may not have a good budget system. My question is, Is could we make this specific for the John Tanner State Park <coughs> instead of making it wholesale for all state parks? Well, there's a couple of things in the bill. Number one, 
I don't see it as dismantling our state parks. I believe it's keeping our state parks viable. And number two is with DNR, they have a conservation easement monitoring program to make sure those parks are being kept to the way they're supposed to be kept and running for the public use. So I think those protections are built in and that's why I went to DNR to make sure that this bill was drafted specifically for those counties that have the ability to take these parks, but also make sure DNR had the enforcement mechanisms to make sure they're being used in a proper, how proper do you way. Excuse me. How can DNR enforce proper care of a park when the county may not have the money when they couldn't take care of the park because they didn't have the money? Well, again, I'll go back to the conservation easement and the restrictions put in that conservation easement before that property is ever deeded over to the county. But the county it's may not have the means to maintain the easement years down the road. Not maybe the first year, but years down the road. The state park system didn't think they'd be at the point of giving away anything either today. you have anything like that on that? Hmm? There's no reversionary. There's nothing that if the counties can't maintain it that something happens to give it back to the state to put it back where it'll be taken care of. So what happens? Hi. Uh, Hi. My name is Steve Friedman. I'm the chief of real estate. So I, I work with conservation easements all the time. And uh, what, what the easement would do certainly is to identify what are the natural resources on that property and assure that they are protected. So that the county, you know, if the county was having financial problems and wanted to go in and, as someone said, sell part of the property to raise funds to care for other parts, they would not be able to do that. The easement would preclude that. Uh, if the county wanted to come in and maybe you know, remove all the timber again to raise money to do something else, the easement would preclude that. And we would be monitoring that prop, that easement on an annual basis. So what I, what I you know, the buildings, you know, that, that's a, that would be a challenge. I, I, I mean, I recognize what you're saying, but I think we all face that. Um, so I, I think we see this as, uh, this is the best way really to protect that property because the county is saying that they do want to put some resources into it and then we will put language on top of that to assure that the natural resources are protected. I have no problem if this is what Carroll County wants to do for John Tanner State Park. My problem is having a statewide application for all of the other parks where other counties have not expressed that kind of interest. I, I just don't know why this bill can't be specific for that park. Okay. Pull that microphone up and say that so we can hear it, please. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to point out that special laws passed through general legislation are unconstitutional, so we would have to be very careful how we did that. Thank you. I was going to add, if you would like a reverter language, it, it can do that fairly easily. Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tell the committee, uh, there's not a restaurant on this, on this, on this uh, property. It is mainly a, uh, for the use by the, the public for uh, the, um, for camp, um, uh, is it any camping? Is it camping there? Yes. And I assume the county is going to charge, uh, continue to charge for uh, where they can receive some funds from this. And our park system has undergone a tremendous challenge this past year and the year before. And I have been one of those uh, uh, areas where it was hard hit in regard to Bagby. And, um, I applaud what Carroll County is trying to do to save that for the public uh, use. And uh, this is um, an opportunity for us to maintain and preserve uh, this for the state still, but allowing an, another entity to come in 
and take over the responsibilities, but still the oversight of the state is, is still there. And that's the way I'm interpreting this, if I'm wrong. You're, you're correct. I'm, again, got to be a willing county to take it. Just because they're willing doesn't mean DNR has got to give it to them. There's a public uh, meeting process in place. Make sure the public understands what's going on. There's the conservation easement. We're not saying if a county wants it, they're going to get it from DNR. We're not going to say uh, DNR is going to give it to them if they want it. But if there's a need there and there's someone there, such as the county, willing to fulfill this need, and they can work in <coughs> partnership together to keep these parks open for the citizens of this state and the citizens that surround us and anyone else that comes in to visit our great state, we need to make sure we move forward on that. Again, the final process has to be done through the General Assembly and the state institution property. So there are protections in place that I hope may address some of your concerns, but I'd want to come back again and lay out those things in from the Willen Park to the DNR, willing to give it up to them if, if there's a need there, they don't have to, the conservation easement, the public hearings. There's so many things in place and the General Assembly's approval for this to take place. So I think we have a lot of obstacles to put up in front of someone if a park is looking to go somewhere that we don't want it to go or we don't think should go to that entity. This is. I believe it's a great protection for our state parks to leave them open. And I would truly ask for your favorable consideration on this, uh, on this measure. Representative Chokas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, um, a question, and this would, 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 I don't know if this would work or not work, but so I'm just gonna throw it out there. Would a friendly amendment saying that should the county not fulfill their obligations, the property reverts back to the state and goes back to the way it was. Would that be considered uh, to help your legislation or not? I believe just a few ago, legislative council said that would be pretty easily put into the bill. Is that correct? And I think that would also be okay with the department. But we would definitely read the language to, to, to hear how that would be stated in the bill, which would be probably a new line E or subsection E in the bill. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and while you're doing that, I'm going to call on Representative Horn. Yes, sir, there's 48 state parks, um, 13 historic sites. This would also, Heritage Preserve also applies to wildlife management areas, natural areas. I'm not sure offhand how many of those are Heritage Preserve, but it's it's quite a few uh, that apply okay, to parks. Okay, so there are that. lots of parks that are Heritage Preserve. Okay, and there's but there's other properties that are Heritage Preserve. Or historic preserve. Uh, locations or? or you know, for example, Osabaugh Island um, is a heritage preserve, so other natural areas. It's super, super idea, uh, and there are lots of other areas in the state um, that the state is not funding now that are recreational and in and, and, uh, and economical areas for people to come visit that maybe other counties would like to look at some of the way he's trying to do this. So I applaud him for bringing this idea, this concept forward uh, and I hope they'll work out the mechanics way to work out and I think other counties that will look at the, the forest that are being closed right now that certain counties would like to try to keep forests open and parks open and so forth that we could use this as a stepping stone to do some of that. So I applaud him for bringing it forward. I think we have a huddle of attorneys. 
if, oh, we think we have it. Okay, do we have some resolution on a on a good way to approach this bill today, or do we need to? And let me point out, you're one of the best legislative council folks around. So I, I would say <laughs> I would say the best. Uh, yes, the best. <laughs> All right. I I would point out. I think we have a baby that nobody wants, but um, and. and, and, and in the event that the county or local government, I'm sorry, in the event that a county or local government that is in receipt of property pursuant to this code section fails to satisfy the requirements and restrictions placed in the conservation easement, said property may, within the discretion of the department, revert back to the state as if such transfer had not been executed. And again, the discretion of the department is something that the department feels strongly about. Just out of curiosity, should that say Department of Natural Resources or is that? Okay. If it's throughout and it's consistent, I say we're fine with that. Representative Buckner. When it, can you read the 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 part again about reverts back to the department as it something like as it was as if such transfer had not been executed so does that mean that it would go back to being a heritage trust designation yeah. versus the conservation easement that that was the goal yes okay okay i think we've about worked this one over <laughs> maybe not we're about ready to uh Moving the very last part of that uh, amendment, uh, if Ms. Long would just let us know exactly what we're taking out. I'm sorry, we would remove the language as if such transfer had not been executed uh, in order to allow the department discretion to uh, negotiate that return if they chose to. For just in case repairs or whatever that may need to be negotiated out, that would give them that ability. Okay. We are we are going to. I think we've heard uh, enough testimony and questions, and we are going to either um, amend and make a recommendation, or we're going to make a decision that we're going to let uh, some things be put together for a, another substitute to come back to us. And I am okay with either approach. What is the desire of the committee? I like that approach. Okay, so let's. Uh, <coughs> Representative Kidd is um, is recommending that we amend, and I am assuming Representative Kidd that that amendment yes, sir. includes willing in front of county on line twenty eight, yes, and includes the insertion of D. Nothing in this code section shall be construed so as to compel a county or local government to accept conveyance of a heritage preserve. And no conveyance shall take place without the approval of the local governing authority. And it will also include Ms. Long. In the event that the county, a county or local government that is in receipt of property pursuant to this code section fails to satisfy the requirements and restrictions placed in the conservation easement, said property may, within the discretion of the board, revert back to the state of Georgia. And Ms. Long, is that subsection E? Uh, Yes, Mr. Chairman. And we have a motion to amend the bill that is before us. 
with a second. All members in favor, raise your right hand, please. Okay. All right, so it is amended, and I would now entertain a motion to uh, Representative Kidd moves that we do pass House Bill 90 by substitute as amended by the committee with a second from Representative Chokas. All in favor, raise your right hand. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. I anticipated this being a relatively short bill today. Me too. But I will say I appreciate the committee's hard work, and I do feel like I just gave birth to a state park. So, uh, <laughs> but thank you so much. All right, let's look at House Resolution 95. And Frank, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to you and allow you to come and uh, share with us. Uh, the details and uh, members of the committee you have in front of you have in your folder uh, both a copy of House Resolution 95 as well as a synopsis that breaks down uh, and the synopsis is is done very well and very informative and thank you uh, for putting that together for us um, I, I like this approach thank you very much and uh, let's uh, hear what is on House Resolution 95 all right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Uh, this resolution is what is brought before the committee every year. It is the omnibus resolution of several conveyances in various counties. And if it's all right, I'll just run quickly through here, and then I'll certainly entertain any questions. Uh, and let me interrupt you just for a moment. Yes, sir. We will go all the way through, and we'll we'll look at if anybody has any questions uh, about any of them. Uh, we'll look at those uh, after the fact. And I know we have a couple of folks here that. That would like to speak if you would like to speak on anything there's a, a yellow pad over here uh, you can go uh, sign up if you'd like to speak uh, hopefully we can get through this and and um, you'll just be there in case there are any questions but uh, uh, mr. Smith all right thank you mr. chairman the uh, first conveyance is in Appling County Department of Transportation uh, requests the conveyance of 2.7 acres for the fair market value for road safety improvement project in uh, along the Bacon County line. The second conveyance is in Burke County. Stuart Rackley requests a 3.3 acre conveyance access easement. Uh, the consideration for that access across state property would be a conservation easement over 58 acres and an access easement to the state as well. In Calhoun County, the West Georgia Consortium Housing Authority requests a lease for $10 to put some video security equipment on a forestry tower through June of 2025. This is to, to help out with police enforcement in the area. The next conveyance in Carroll County. Uh, Carroll County requests the conveyance of about three quarters of an acre uh, for $10 for the construction and maintenance of a road this is at West Georgia Technical College to re relieve some heavy con traffic congestion. Again, in Carroll County, the city of Bowden requests the conveyance of an old agriculture poultry lab. This is about two acres to be turned into a free clinic for the less fortunate citizens in the area. The consideration for this is the same amount of money that the state paid in 1995, the original $2,000. Colquitt County um, the old Moultrie Armory, Colquitt County Board of Education requests the conveyance of the five acre tract, which is the old Moultrie Armory, for use as a kindergarten program. The consideration for this is $10, and this is to always be used for public purpose. In Fulton County, uh, Atlanta Hall Management requests a 30 year ground lease with four renewal options for five years each. This is a piece of property near the Georgia World Congress Center campus to house the College Football Hall of Fame. The consideration for this ground lease is to be the economic benefit to the state of Georgia. Uh, in addition, the state intends, has authorized and intends to sell $10 million in GEO bond money for support structures, including a parking deck, to support the Hall of Fame. 
in Lowndes County, the city of Valdosta requests about three quarters of an acre be conveyed. Uh, this is a piece of property at the rear of the Valdosta Farmers Market for improved safety and traffic flow. This again, the conveyance for $10. In Monroe County, uh, Monroe County requests the conveyance of Old State Patrol Post 44. This was constructed in 1969 by the county and has outlived its useful life. The county has agreed to demolish the structure and rebuild a new post not to exceed $750,000. In Stevens County, Department of Transportation requests the conveyance of about a quarter of an acre to improve State Route 17. The consideration for this would be the fair market value. Again, in Stevens County, the Stevens County commissioners request a 25-year lease over about one acre of the State Patrol's four-acre property to construct a fire station. The consideration for this would be the increased public safety and about $2,700 in improvements made to the uh, State Patrol post, which the county built for the state. In Toombs County, the Southeastern Early College and Career Academy requests a 25-year ground lease over about one acre. Uh, this would allow the technical college system to build a building, uh, a career academy, costing about $6.7 million. Uh, in addition, the Southeastern Early College and Career Academy would contribute about $2.8 million of that $6.7 million towards the construction of the facility, which would earn credits towards a high school diploma and a technical diploma certificate. Toombs County, this is the old Lyons Armory. The City of Lyons would request the conveyance of a five-acre tract. Um, the consideration for this old armory would be the outstanding general obligation bonds, which is approximately $175,000. And again, this would be used for public purpose, which would be a uh, public works building for the city. And finally, Mr. Chairman, Upson County, this is the old Thomaston Armory. The city of Thomaston requests the conveyance of the old armory. It's about 7.05 acres. Uh, request that for um, the outstanding bond indebtedness, which is approximately $30,000. And again, any of these conveyances to the cities or counties, the limitation would be this would always be used for public purpose. And Mr. Chairman, that's, that's it. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate uh, your presentation and appreciate the synopsis. This being uh, my first uh, opportunity to deal with the conveyance bill, uh, members of the committee, I've uh, spent a little bit of extra time uh, with Mr. Smith and asked for the um, uh, the synopsis and found it very helpful to me and, and felt like that uh, might be useful information for you as well. Any members of the committee have questions about any of the conveyances on the uh, on the resolution in front of us? All right. Okay, let me let me share with you something that we're going that we're going to do, um, because I've had a I've been approached by a couple about a couple of items uh, that are not on the conveyance bill. Um, we are not going to move on this conveyance bill today. Um, there is a, um, a a very good possibility that um, that uh, within the next week or so we'll be able to make a, an amendment. Uh, we, we're looking at a couple of uh, additional properties. Uh, one is uh, Metro Prison that's being um, uh, about to be sold, uh, I think, to CCA, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, if, if we can get that ready in time, we're going to amend that here. If not, we'll send it and let the Senate amend it. I, I just prefer to amend it here than send it to the Senate for the amendment. So uh, we're, we're going to sit on this um, this resolution for the time being. and and um, maybe we'll be ready next week to, to make an amendment. There's also a Harrelson County boot camp that, um, uh, that we're looking at as well. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we may have some amendments uh, as we move forward with those. And some of those, excuse me for not punching button, it's something as big as CCA and, and some of those, uh, wouldn't they almost require looking at separately than incorporating, I don't think anything wrong with having two separate conveyance bills by any means or three or four. But some of those might be pretty massive and uh, pretty complex through the system nowadays. 
I, I think I think we I think we'll be okay on one conveyance bill if it if it looks like it we need to do that we'll we'll certainly uh, we'll certainly do that but at this point we uh, uh, we're going to at least wait in, uh, another week before we decide whether we're going to move it like it is or amend it. Representative Buckner. Um, Chairman Neal, in the past when we had conveyance bills, representatives from all the different counties that are represented were contacted, and that's been done. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. I meant to, to point that out, that we, uh, we had uh, uh, made those contacts as well. Thank you. Members of the committee, any more questions or comments? Thank you so much. Good job. Uh, very informative um, presentation, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>